Scott almost explains. A bit of a quick update. It's finally started raining. But also the washing's not out down the street. So that means I might be able to run my forge and finally get the hardening sequence done and the annealing of the um, assassin. Now normally my forge would be down there. Run in my boiler flue pipe thing. There. I'm underneath it. What I've tried to do is so I can get the smoke higher to start with. I want the forge off the floor so the smoke goes higher quicker. So even less aggravation with the neighbours. So I'll put it up on a wooden stage on its legs. Like this. And it's by the next door to the wall. So I put a heat reflector on it. Another heat reflector on the back and a tile. So that means that the heat should literally just shoot straight up in the air, miss the wall mostly, and power the smoke up into the air higher, faster. So that's an update on my forge. We see how it works later on. Um, give it a bit of a clean out. And then the other thing is, well, I run through that um, pack, okay, because I've remembered something. What my dad used to tell me about um, rolling pork joint, and I'm able to get the wool blanket smaller, a lot smaller. So join me again in a minute, and I'll show you this little trick I've come up with. Um, I suppose thousands of people have been doing it, but I, it's never come across me today because I uh, just sat down and had a think of that. Okay, hopefully you should be able to see all of this in shot. So what I've got, it's very difficult to see. I'm guessing because the green won't contrast with the brown very well is this basically looks like a roll joint of meat so I'll just run through how we do it and you'll now see how terrible I am at knots so using a piece of power cord that I would have had in the pack anyway Obviously, I've burnt both the ends. There we go. Touch more light. Try that there. Right. Now, obviously, burn the end because it's artificial, man made sort of fibres, and then put a decent knot in the end of it because the, the slip joint that I'm using relies on the knot for stopping the, the thing and you're actually able to cinch it up really tight. So imagine that you've folded it into a decent amount of sections, the, the wall blanket, and now you've rolled it up into a reasonably tight ball. But you still end up with something like this. So here's the string, the cordage, your power cord, but you do need a knot at one end. Okay, so there it goes. So like that. So just go around once, back through, and then allow in the knot to cinch up because the, the knot is stopping it. So I'll do that again, hopefully you can see. Okay. Just a small end around once and then literally as simple as I put a knot in it and then because I'm pulling it slip it's going to slip until the knot stops it at the end and then you just cinch it up now I can go this way or that way it doesn't really matter so that's one and then as you go along Let's try I want four there. So about here, put your finger on it, up underneath, and then thread it through once. That way, that way, that way, that way. And you're actually cramming it tighter. Number three will be about there. To here. 
gone under again. I'm going to pull the knot about. Pull about. Pull. Yep. And then one more. About there. And then if you go underneath one end and catch the opposite side to where you were, you now loop it through once. You're going to see there. Pull that way first, then that way, and then once more with a little bit of a knot at the end. And to be honest, that's not going anywhere. Now you ended up with a very, t you know, about as tight as what you can get the wall to go. And by the time I then ram that down the pack, I've got a gap down inside, down in there, which if you're really heavy, you can actually get your mini sleeping bag down inside anyway. So, that was just me sat down thinking of a rolled joint of pork. Um, my dad used to work for Dewurst and he would do that so fast you couldn't even see what his fingers were doing. Okay, it takes me quite a while to get knots into my head. That's one of the few knots that sort of stuck. Okay, bowline, just about. Prussic hitch, just about. I can remember how to do those sort of things and a reef knot and all the rest of it. But the crucial thing with that is to get a knot in the end to begin with. So when you put it through, and you have that little, very simple slip knot. By pulling on it, the knot, the, the knot you made at the end of the string cinches up in that sort of mini lasso at the end and then all you're doing is you're looping it right and just compressing it down enough and once that's in there um, all the rest just fits in as well as it would anyway so now you pack the food uh, oh, and the other thing was just because those items were small I put the fire still on the carabiner of the torch just because they're small that's a lot easier to see at night and it all jingles about and makes a lot of noise so there's less chance of losing one or the other it's a bit bigger but I hope that's a bit of help anybody else um, still managing to keep the wool blanket on the inside of the pack because there's no point getting to camp and it's the wool blanket is wet because they're a pig to dry out okay so all the best it's got from Wessex Blades with Brian and Mitch's I'll tell you in Haversack. Thank you for joining me again. All the best.